There you are. Hey guys, it's Dave and welcome to the Weird Kid Show. So if you've been following me in the last couple of episodes, you'll see I've started this bad boy. Ended up being a little bit more involved than I thought, but that's okay. Uh, I don't mind these bigger projects. Uh, so this is the conclusion of our porthole and tentacle build. Okay, and we got a little something that's going to be uh, snuck into this thing at the end, so you're going to want to stick around for this one. All right, so the porthole has been done. The bulkhead has been done. I added some hardware so that you can hang this thing on the wall. The tentacle has been made out of couch foam, and it, uh, I made suction cups out of Sculpey, and it's had five coats of latex put on it. And what I did was uh, to fill in the gaps here, I put I poured in liquid latex all around it. So it's it's secured, it's in there, it's locked in the place. Okay? But it's boring, and we're not gonna have it in this position. A tentacle is all over the place, but I'm going to want to paint it in this position first. It's going to make life a lot easier. So I'm going to paint it first, and then I'm going to pose it, and we're going to add that final element to it and hang it up here, and we're going to have a look at it in all of its glory. So hang tight. Check this out. <laughs> waiting for this you know uh, I really would have loved to have just consistently worked on this thing got it done from A to B and then just put one video on it although it would have been lengthy uh, I just don't have that luxury so um, anyways this gives you guys a reason to come back but this is this is it this is what I've been waiting for all right so uh, it's all latex and we use the couch foam for it so it's squishy and it's got that wire armature in it so when it's done we're going to be able to pose this thing and then I'm going to add that final element I'm talking about. But I can just use acrylics on this thing. Uh, it's You're going to be painting on latex so as to where I can use acrylics I'm still going to need to mix my paint with latex okay and I'm gonna be honest with you I'm no expert on this stuff um, it wasn't until uh, the middle of last year I guess it was where I started my first adventure in latex mask making uh, and that's like the first time I would really worked with latex and I've been playing around with it since then but the thing I've discovered is that painting latex is a whole art form within itself you know uh, you get into the airbrushing and then just the textures, uh, the consistency, how you dry brush it's totally different than just using straight acrylics. It's different than anything I've ever used, but we're going to get there. So what am I going to paint this? Well, I commonly see a lot of octopus uh, tentacles and whatnot are like this, almost like a salmon color, which is not quite red, but like a soft in between a, a red and a pinkish color and for some reason I found this color at Hobby Lobby and this here is called oh sorry my eyes this is Anita's all-purpose acrylic paint uh, and it's a permanent acrylic and it's wine that's what this is called now it looks a bit dark it's a dark red However, this is something that you need to consider. Latex is this color. So it's almost like you're taking, mixing a white in with your color. It's gonna make it a shade or two or three, I don't know yet, uh, lighter. So I don't know what's gonna happen, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some latex in this solo cup. Alright, I'm gonna put about a looks like I don't know, a third of a cup. I'll put that lid on there, make sure it's sealed on there good. Now the whole thing is not gonna be painted this color. Uh, I wanna get some 
on the bottom here with the suction cups I want to get some like white inside there and then try to do a transition in between to kind of break it up see I might have a few little boogers here to cut here and there of uh, little bits of uh, latex where you pull the brush away and it pulls up a bit of the latex and it ends up drying in that position that's not a big deal uh, we can take care of that so I got my uh, latex uh, about a third of a cup and now I'm going to go ahead I'm going to just dump a lot of this in there and now there's some people that will put uh, distilled water uh, but a lot of times you know they, they, they're running stuff through an airbrush they might even want to thin it down even more now I, I didn't put the whole bottle of what I put almost the whole bottle there's still some in there but now I also have on hand some white and I also got some uh, this is another Anita's from uh, uh, this is a taupe gray which to me is almost it's almost a beige khaki color if you will I like that color uh, Hobby Lobby I will say their paints are a bit more expensive but they have some pretty cool colors there um, typically I buy a lot of what I make at Walmart uh, in the craft section which is like the Apple Barrel products and stuff and uh, folk art and all that uh, but they do have some pretty cool colors at Hobby Lobby that uh, I'd have to mix otherwise alright so damn that's uh, that's pretty damn close to what I envision uh, I might want to try to add just a little bit of white not too much because I want to use a lighter version uh, for for uh, dry brushing. All right, so I just want to get a little bit lighter. And now we've added this latex in there because all to where it's going to be a static prop. You know, I guess typically the whole purpose of using latex uh, paints, using you know mixing latex with your paints for masks is because the stretching uh, what you end up with is uh, you know when you move your face it stretches so just using straight acrylics won't work because you'll end up with some cracking alright so I'm just going in here and I'm just coating this thing just getting a good color on it now what I'm going to do, like it's not going to look very good right now because this is just the base color. This is more of like a primer, if you will. I'm going to step that up and put a little bit more of that red in there and bring it back down a little bit more. You just got to play around with it and you never know. I mean, there's people that absolutely amaze me on Facebook and YouTube and stuff like that, what they can do with... Uh, uh, when they paint masks and uh, do this stuff like Steve Catronio uh, somebody I'm proud I could say is my friend he's also a friend of the show um, the stuff he does is phenomenal you know and he's been really fundamental he's helped me so much you know I've uh, poor guy I've like uh, picked his brain uh, with a lot of the projects I've been working on and he's been very gracious and uh, accommodating he's helped me out every single time uh, with pointers and tips and everything and after all I mean if you guys haven't gone and checked it out you need to go and check out Grimwood Hollow which is Steve's YouTube channel uh, and you're gonna find some awesome stuff there because it's not just Halloween uh, Steve had worked in the special effects industry for since he was uh, not even out of high school and uh, he ended up hitting the ground running it's basically a special effects artist Cinderella story the guy got picked up right away and he ended up working on some fantastic films like uh, one of the first films he got to work on was Phantasm 2 making those uh, evil spheres uh, I got to work on Men in Black um, a whole slew of uh, Hollywood big budget films with eight listers in it and stuff like that but apart from that Steve used to uh, own uh, 
the Haunted Vineyard in California, which it was starting to become a really uh, talked about haunt, a uh, successful haunt. And on top of that, he does his own home haunt, a little haunt at home, and he just he builds all his own props and makes a little storyline. And uh, it's just absolutely amazing uh, the stuff that he comes up with. And, and uh, it's inspiring. And I think that's what it's all about, you know. Uh, I don't know. I think I enjoy doing this stuff than I actually enjoy, uh, say, displaying it. You know, to make something like this, uh, yeah, it's nice when people uh, see your work and say, hey, that's really nice, but uh, I think it's just the fact of creating something, uh, doing something artistic is what uh, really drives me, and seeing other people do this kind of stuff is really, really, really inspiring, so uh, anyways, all of that to say, please go check out Grimwood Hollow, do yourself a favor, check out his videos. All right, so I'm adding some some more of that red in there. I, I'm kind of, and I'm going to tell you, I, I, I'm, I'll be honest, when I'm not happy with something, I'm not happy with something. And right now, uh, I'm not happy with the amount I put of white in here. I, I wish it was a bit darker. I'd like to be darker in the back and then transition to the lighter. Uh, so it's kind of it's not pink but pretty close but I guess the tentacles uh, you know all the tentacles I see I go on uh, I did a lot of Google searches and uh, looked at images and stuff of, of octopus and the tentacles and stuff like that and uh, it is a pinkish color I mean they have some different colored ones but uh, the ones I see most often are the ones that have like a, a pink uh, hue to them, tinge to them, and, uh, but you can paint, that's the good thing is, you can paint your tentacle however you want, there is no rules, you could paint it purple and orange if you wanted to, you can create, uh, you know, this is, this is a fictitious, you know, fictitious, uh, because I want, you know, this I envision as being like a kraken, you know, the 20,000 leagues under the sea, giant octopus, Kraken or a squid or something like that Something that's gonna attack and try to take down a, a big ship, you know and be capable of doing it You know so this this amount of tentacle that's coming through the porthole is nothing compared to what it's attached to the thing that's gigantic, you know and uh, Like you could build a you could build a facade uh, doing the techniques that I've shown you here, um, putting the plates and rivets on the walls and stuff like that, put it on a big piece of plywood and make some uh, portholes uh, and um, you know make you can make breaches all throughout the thing. You know have some of the the uh, plates separating with a tentacle coming through or. A bulging eye that you can do that too there's so much you can do with this stuff but you can there again you can paint it whatever color you want to all right guys so I'm gonna work on this for a bit I'm gonna get it all primed out and try to figure out what color I'm gonna go with next to uh, start bringing this thing to life so I appreciate you being here so hang tight all right guys so this is where we're at this is what I ended up doing okay so I went ahead and I painted the whole thing uh, with that wine uh, with mixed with latex and then uh, I put it on there and I wasn't too fond of how bright it was like it's how um, too pinkish I guess so I went ahead and I ended up putting some uh, I got some of this red here this is true red this is another uh, Anita's acrylic from Hobby Lobby and then I put some black in there uh, and I went ahead and painted the back and then onto the sides a little bit and then I added more black and brought it down so what it started to do is give me a purple a dark like a plum color and then I went again and then I added more black and then just kind of feathered it in so you can't probably really see it 
but it starts off as a dark plum here in the very back and then it slowly starts to transition until lighter but I went ahead and dry brushed that final color here uh, just to, to tie it in for one but I'm also going to go back in and go in with some lighter colors and then I think I'm going to possibly even feather in some stripes yeah that thing is swaying it's swaying gotta be careful if someone slap me in the face um, I've got this lavender and I think it might be a cool color to try to feather like some stripes in it just so ever uh, lightly and then I'm gonna go through the whole thing with um, this top taupe t-a-u-e t-a-u-p-e gray uh, and I'm going to just do a very light dry brush, just hints to uh, make it pop. And I think I'm going to do the inside of the suction cups this color and then feather it out uh, to try to blend it in and do some, just do some dry brushing and uh, just keep working on it. I don't know for sure how it's going to translate. I might end up changing the, the color scheme. I don't know. I never know what I'm doing. I get a basic idea and then I just jump into it and make discoveries along the way. So if I make mistakes, I'm making it for you. You won't have to because I'll correct it and then go on to the proper way. So uh, yeah, uh, so I'm going to keep on this thing. Uh, I got a fan going, you probably hear it. Try to get some quicker dry time here. I want to get a little bit more dry before I go ahead and try to put them stripes on and then do all this dry brushing. So it'll look a bit different next time you see it so hang tight guys all right guys <clears throat> and there we have it I, I i just went ahead and painted it this was a journey this was an interesting uh endeavor um trying to pick the colors and stuff and then uh logistically working out the the shading and stuff like that so uh basically like i said what i did was i went with that wine color um uh, mixed it with the latex and then did a dry brush I wasn't too keen on how light it was I wanted to start off with a dark color but I ended up going backwards uh, I ended up dry brushing from light to dark I ended up going because I painted the whole thing that soft color but that was okay it worked out um, I mixed some black in there I ended up with a plum color and then did some dry brushing on it around it uh, but then uh, giving it a chance to dry I decided I wanted to make it more uh, pop, and uh, some good advice from uh, my buddy Steve Catronio, thank you my friend, uh, he gave me some suggestions, and so decided we're going to make it pop a little bit more, you know, uh, so that it's in more of a contrast than what the porthole is. So I took some, I got bold, I took some neon purple, and mixed that with some latex, and then uh, dry brushed at that, so that's like the final dry brush you see right there is the neon purple okay and over here in the front uh, I, I, I you know I blended that neon purple into the side so it's softer here it transitions into a lighter color and so here what you see in the front is more of a, a soft very soft uh, lavender okay it's it's got a very fine purple tinge in it but it also has some grays like a khaki color and then inside the suckers I just went with like a you know a bone white you know but the last thing that I did was to do some freckling and for that to make it you know give it some character I took um, and this is another color I got at Hobby Lobby and I need is all-purpose acrylic this is light turquoise okay and so what you do in that case is uh, you take a brush, okay, and then you dip it in a paint, and then you take your fingers, and then you run your fingers like you know when you, you used to when you were a kid you had a plastic comb you could run your fingers and make that that noise with it. Well, that's the same theory you're doing with a paintbrush, but you're doing it from a distance and you're just uh, freckling it. And I went ahead and I took some uh, moon yellow and not too heavy just 
you know, just little freckles here and there, just to kind of break it up. All right, um, so for the most part, it is dry, okay? What I need to do now is to clear coat it. <clears throat> now all I have is matte finish. This is Krylon matte finish clear coat. And um, you could go with the gloss if you want. I'm gonna go ahead and do this here, but I, um, you want it, it's an octopus and it's just breached the, 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 you know, the port side of your vessel. And so uh, it's gonna be wet. So we probably want it to be glossy. We can even incorporate some silicon dripping and stuff into that. We'll see if we can get to that too. But right now I'm gonna go ahead and clear coat this. All right, and then we're gonna we're gonna move on, let this thing dry, and then move on from there. But first, a couple of weeks ago, I had done a video about uh, the new studio and stuff, and I had uh, mentioned I was gonna do a giveaway. Well, I was supposed to do it two weeks after that point in time, but um, I dragged my feet. I think we're in three weeks now, or something like that, uh, or I'm a couple weeks overdue. Anyways, we're gonna do that giveaway right now. And it was for a monster bottle. And it's gonna be this monster bottle. This cute little guy here. Uh, got a huge eye and some uh, front teeth there. And it is a functional little bottle. You can put your little trinkets and stuff in it. All right. And so I wanna thank all of you who entered. And all of your names are in here. So we're gonna give it a good shaking. I'm not gonna look. I'm gonna pick one. All right. So we've got Ray Mitchell. All right, Ray Mitchell, you have won this little monster bottle. Okay. Uh, come look me up on the Trio of Terror group on Facebook or under my name, Dave LePage, on Facebook, or you can find me kicking around uh, Trio of Terror um, to get me your address so that I can send you this cool little bottle. So thank you all guys for entering. All right, so let's get back to this thing. All right, guys. Um, I really can't believe it, but it's done. Um, I put that uh, matte clear coat on there, and now I can, it's all dry, and it's, it's got a good coating on it, and it feels, feels good. I put some on the, the bulkhead and the porthole. It's the moment of truth. This is, this is what this whole thing has led up to, and that's to finally pose this thing, and I'm going to show you what's going to be added to it. So... Uh, I'm not going to do it on camera because I'm going to have to play around with it. So I'm going to surprise you. Up there on that wall is a hook um, ready for this to be hung on. So let's do it, guys. Wish me luck. All right, guys. And this is what we ended up with. So yeah, I took some time, tried different things, different poses. Uh, now, unfortunately, I was gonna do something. I was real impressed with myself on having the idea. Actually, I didn't have the idea. I had seen something on Facebook of a tentacle coming out of a porthole, but they had did some wiring in it and the tentacle was wrapped up here and it was holding us like a uh, old Edison style light bulb fixture and I thought that was cool as hell I was like yeah I want to do that so I went and got a lantern this lantern from Walmart uh, it's galvanized and uh, so one thing I screwed up on for this, although I didn't just think of it, I just thought of this here recently. Um, I only put one piece of wire in here. All right, so if you want to, what he was going to do is he was going to hold this lantern. And I was going to put tea lights in there. Battery power tea lights. Um, 
so I'd actually had this tentacle, uh, it was like holding the lantern, but the single wire in the, you know, the armature is not strong enough to support the weight of that. So I had tried this old junky one that I, uh, Dr. Morbius has, my plague doctor, it's lighter, but it's still too heavy. So I'm thinking I'm getting one of those lanterns uh, from uh, the dollar store. It's light enough and see if I can do some with it. Or I just might leave it as it is. Now what I did do was I added some silicone uh, for drips. Okay, it's white now, but it'll dry clear. And then, sorry, I'm bumping this thing all over the place. And then I added a little bit of silicone there for some water drips or slime, if you will. And then I put some silicone over here. And it's all posed and everything else. And so the last thing I'm going to do, uh, which I'm not going to do with you guys here today, is I'm going to get some uh, glossy clear coat. And uh, blast just the tentacle not the porthole and not the bulkhead just the tentacle with a gloss clear coat so it, it'll be a shiny you know because it's wet um, so anyways guys I hope you like this and um, I hope this is something you guys will try because it was fun alright guys there you have it my porthole and tentacle build uh, incidentally a YouTuber by the name of Sam Hain Prop Works reached out to me. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, he commented on my tutorial, uh, having watched uh, the first few parts. Um, and he had reached out because he was interested in doing a porthole tutorial, seeing how I wasn't doing the uh, one on this build. And I said, yeah, absolutely, that, that that's perfect. So uh, this guy here is pretty talented. He's got some really cool builds. Um, and he did build this uh, porthole, so I'm going to give you a link down in the description so that you can uh, go check it out. So maybe you want to do this, but you don't want to spend the money for the porthole like I did. Maybe you want to build the whole thing from scratch. So I'm going to send you over here to this guy. So if you haven't done so already, guys, please like and subscribe and hit the bell. It's going to notify you when I upload future videos, and there's so much more to come. I've got so much more to build. Uh, while you're at it, go check out my brother's uh, key from Cobwebs and Candlesticks and uh, Vic Springston from Monster Misfits. We are the Trio of Terror. Uh, and anyways, guys, I appreciate you so much. And until next time, peace.